The summary of benefits and coverage guidance has been anticipated for quite some time. As a matter of fact, it was supposed to go into effect, this requirement, on March 23rd of 2012, but the final regulations were just released in early February. What does this mean for health plans and insurance carriers alike? Now we have time frames that we know that we have to have things implemented by. Now we know what documents are required, what they look like, what information needs to go on the templates. One of the long-standing questions that had been included with the proposed regulations was, what if the summary plan description, your SPD, already has the information that the new summary of benefits and coverage is going to require? Can we simply replace it? And the answer is no. The summary of benefits and coverage, which is known as the SBC, still has to be provided in whole but you can include it in the SPD as long as it's at the front of the document. They even say maybe after the table of contents. The penalties that are applicable here for both insurance carriers and employers who sponsor plans for non-compliance are up to $100 excise tax per day per person who does not receive this, this summary of benefits and coverage. And this has to go out to all participants. So this isn't just to the subscriber, the employee, it's to every participant in their family. But one notice suffices to the last known address as long as you know everybody lives there. There's also a separate penalty. This one goes up to $1,000 per participant or per event. And the plan administrator is right in the middle of all of this enforcement. They're the ones who are ultimately responsible for ensuring that everything gets done. Up to that point, there's almost asymmetrical liability where both the insurer and the health plan are responsible, but the final responsibility lies directly with the plan administrator.